Welcome to Courageous Conversations with Lionheart Coaching Co., where we talk about the hard parts of our journey and the courage it can sometimes take to find our way back to ourselves. I'm your host, Mandy Woodard, and today we're going to talk about stepping into your power. We're also going to talk about the victim mentality and feeling our way through pain. There is so much packed into this episode. I cannot wait for you to listen. So let's get started. Hello today, my friend. I thought today's topic would be about just this one thing. But as I've dove deeper into it, it's become so much more. And just like there are layers to our healing journey, there are also layers to what I want to share today. I hope you can hang with me through it. And then if you feel called when you're done listening, I'd love to hear your takeaways. One of the biggest things I am always encouraging people to do is to step into their power. I love to encourage you to step into your power. But in order to do that, we have to stop allowing ourselves to be a victim. So today's topic was about victimizing ourselves. That's what I really wanted to to talk on and have this conversation about, is how we tell this victim story to people When they ask us how we are or where we came from, we may bring up our past and what we went through in childhood. And sometimes that is really hard stuff. It is. I know from my own personal experience. But how we tell our story matters. And our intentions behind our words matter even more. So as I'm thinking about victimization... (laughs) And how we victimize ourselves, even in the little things, every day. Let me tell you what I mean by that. For me, as a mom, I will run all over the place. I will do all the things. And then I will feel as though I am being taken advantage of, or I'm not getting enough of my needs met. And then I turn around and I victimize myself. I blame my family for needing me. I never stop and look at myself and think, well, where are my boundaries? And I'm going to be really honest with you. This week's conversation has felt really difficult for me. And I did not think that it would be. And it's not because so much of this is hard to say. It's more that I know it can be hard to receive. And also, I'm having to face my own crap. I'm having to really look at myself and examine where I'm doing this. Not just as a mom, but anywhere. Somebody asks me a question. I will victimize myself without even realizing that that's what I'm doing. It takes a lot of courage to develop awareness around this. And to see where we are speaking in ways that aren't helpful. To have that come to Jesus moment with ourselves. And, and realize that I may actually be part of this problem. I might actually be attracting this negative energy. I might actually be in my own way right now. I might actually be creating resistance in my life. I do think this is a really great conversation to be having though. It's If it's not clear, it's something that I'm actually working through for myself right now. And today I wanted to talk about our stories and how to stay in our power when sharing them. And I really wanted to talk about how often we victimize ourselves just in everyday life. With starting this podcast, I'm going to be doing a lot of storytelling. I'm going to have people on that are going to be sharing their stories. I thought that this was exactly what we needed to hear up front in the beginning before we even really get rolling into things. Because you're going to hear a lot of stories of people who have been through some really tough stuff. But I want you to notice the theme. The theme is, by the time they're here sitting with me, they are in their power. There is power in our pain. 
but we have to go through that healing journey to get there. And just like I've said already, (laughs) I'm not sure how many times, we heal in layers. I want to share something from a conversation I had recently with a dear friend. Her name is Arlene, and I have to give her all the credit. I was on a call with her a couple weeks ago for myself. She was talking me through some stuff, and there was this realization that I was operating in the shadow side of one of my gates. Looking at human design, we all have gates in our chart, and one of my gates, the shadow side, is victimization. And as we started working through this and talking through this and realizing how I victimize myself, especially when it comes to being in disagreements with my husband, she later shared some things with me in a voice memo and it just was too good to not share. And I've listened to it on repeat now. I've, I've listened to her voice memo probably three or four times and it needs to be shared. She said, when we struggle with victimization, it's because it's easier to become a victim of something than it is to sit with the pain that's inside of us. And wherever there is pain inside of us, that's, that's ours to neutralize and to move through. And that can be really hard. I'm paraphrasing what she said, but I do know the healing journey can be really hard. It's important to have empathy and compassion for yourself in that. Because we all go through pain. We all have pain in our lives. But we also grow through pain. And we carry pain in layers. She actually put this so beautifully. And I know she was reading me something and I don't know what it was. But here I want to share it with you as well. We carry pain in layers that gather like clothes over multiple lifetimes. And the greater the pain someone can endure, the greater the evolution. You can deny your pain through distraction or repression, or you can face it and surrender to it as your teacher. The pain you feel is a road you must travel alone, because it carries the great secrets you must feel all the way through it. How beautiful. And I know you have the ability to heal. We aren't taught that enough. (laughs) I'm going to share this because I, I truly get emotional over this topic and I'm still learning why. I grew up hearing that if you're a child of divorce and you're being raised by a single mom, then you come from a broken family. I heard that so much growing up. You saw movies about it, stories. I even acted in a play once. It was actually, it was a monologue at the local theater that I acted at when I was young, 12, 13 years old. And I played the part of the little girl that had the broken family. And I saw myself so much in her. And because I'd heard so much that I came from this broken family, I feel as though I took on that story that I was also broken. Arlene, if you're listening, we found it. (laughs) I just found it. How real is that? I would probably normally edit this out, but I'm not going to. But I am going to take a second. So I will tell you that I have shifted that story. I do not believe that I am broken. I actually can look back on everything that's happened to me in my childhood and throughout my life and see where it made me the person that I am, even the hardest, darkest of times. And that is not easy, my friends. I was in therapy for a long time. I had a counselor that I went to every week. I have done Reiki energy work. I have dove into myself. And that is how I can now look back and see that. I don't blame anyone for my circumstances. And I know that my past does not define me. Your past does not define you. 
And for the longest time, I used my past as an excuse for the way that I was in my marriage, as I parented my children. A real example is I yelled at my kids so much. And it's because that's what I learned. And that's also because that's what my parents learned. So I carried that story almost like a badge of honor, even though I can see now where that was my victim story. But one day I was sitting with a dear friend who I had seeked for counsel, and she said, just because it was done to you, does that make it right? She didn't say it quite like that, but that's essentially what she was meaning. So because you were taught that, because that's what you experienced, that's what you carry through. We all do the best we can with the information we have when we have it. My mother did the very best she ever could. And she is a phenomenal woman. I know that even though I yelled at my children, I am still a damn good mother. But if I would have carried that victim story, what would happen? My kids would then grow up and do the same thing. Well, you know what? I was yelled at. What does that sound like to yell at your child and then say, well, I had it worse, which I am so guilty of that phrase, but to use what's happened to us in the past as an excuse to go on and be a certain way, or even possibly to mistreat the people around you and then say, well, you know what? My life sucks because this is what happened to me. That's victimizing ourselves. And that is us avoiding the pain of dealing with what it is that we're feeling. It's much easier to victimize ourselves than to sit in our pain. It's much easier to tell a story that will get us the response of, oh, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. I'm so sorry. We get to receive that sympathy. And that can feel good. Somebody sees us. Are you kidding me? Somebody sees me right now and they understand, but there's no power there. There's no power in your story to just only receive sympathy. That's going to, that's going to fill you up for about 2.5 seconds, but to heal, to move through your pain, to sit with your pain and then to go out and tell your story from this place of power, that's empowering. You're not just empowering the people who are going to hear you. You are empowering yourself. That's what I only ever want to help people to see and understand is that you do have this great power within you. Your past does not define you. You're not stuck in your circumstances. A life coach's job, my job, is to aid in the growth process. And there's so much freedom in perspective. There's freedom in shifting your story. There's freedom on the other side of victimhood. When you're still playing a victim... And let me be clear, you may very well have been a victim in a situation. But what I like to say is you're also a survivor. You survived. You're here. Now you get to to heal and grow and become so much greater. It doesn't excuse what someone may have done to you. It doesn't take away from the hurt. But that's the very point of it, right? We must feel that hurt. We must sit in that pain. And I will never deny how hard that is. Ever. I avoided it for a long time. I allowed myself to be that victim and use my story as an excuse. I'll tell you another victim story I said for a long time. And this was what I was originally going to share I'm going to be quite honest with you. I recorded this episode already, but it it lacked something. It didn't have my heart in it, and I could feel that. So (laughs) here we are. 
I, I know we've got it this time. This is my heart. I am being so true to me and everything that I'm saying. But originally I was going to tell you this story and I still want to. <sighs> At some point I heard this story that my mom had to have a rushed C-section because the baby was stressed. And I knew that was true for my brother, but I thought it was also true for me. And actually, she was two weeks overdue with me, and she had a stress test, and then two days later I came. So it wasn't an emergency. But I spent so much of my life anxious and stressed out and worrying. And when people would tell me to stop worrying so much, to calm down, which, let's be honest, is never helpful, my response would be, screw you, I was born stressed. Don't tell me to chill. I have no chill. I was literally born this way. How terrible. And I can see it now. I can see how that was my victim story now. And I was taking that on as if I always, just always will just be stressed. You're not ever, I'm never going to be cured. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you that I don't still get stressed out. And I'm not going to tell you that I don't still feel anxiety from time to time, but It certainly doesn't look anything like it used to. I used to not even be able to go for a walk on the beach and let my kids play freely. I immediately felt like the ocean was going to swallow them whole. And that was going to be it of my babies. They were going to be gone, taken from me. Now, I do worry about my babies. I think most mothers do. We worry that they're going to walk a good path whatever good is. (laughs) We want them to be kind to others. We don't want them to be hurt. But we know we also can't protect them from everything. So I will never tell you that I don't still worry about my kids. Because I definitely do. But I also see where I have healed. Those layers that I've talked about. I've entered into this new layer of healing. And I honestly thought that I was pretty through it. (laughs) It's pretty evident that I'm not, though. And that's okay. We must not judge ourselves in our healing journey. Last year, I've spent so much of my time feeling like I should be through this. How can I say I'm a life coach if I still feel anxiety? How can I teach people how to live with peace When I don't feel peaceful, last year was a very hard year for me, emotionally speaking. I felt like a fraud. But no, I'm human. This is my humanness coming through. And I have the awareness. And I'm doing the work. And that's what matters. But even if you're not ready to do the work, that's okay. Your body is going to know when it's time. You will know exactly when it's time to process something. And you cannot rush that. If you try to rush that process, you're going to miss some stuff. And maybe that's your path. Maybe that's your journey. Is you, you grab the bull by the horns and you rush into that therapist office and you say, I'm ready to heal. And then five years later, you realize that you haven't fully healed. (laughs) You're not going to judge yourself in that moment because you're going to remember this right here, this courageous conversation. (laughs) One of the biggest things, though, that I really wanted to help shift is that why me mentality. That is that victimization. There is no growth in that victim mentality. And if you can at the very least start to have awareness over that Because you think you're going to identify the pain and then you'll start to see where you're, you're using your victim mentality. But maybe what happens for you is you recognize where you're playing the victim and then you dive in and find the pain. There is no right way. There is no set path. It's different for everyone. But that victim mentality is toxic. It's not just toxic for the people around you and what you're attracting to you. It's also toxic for you, within you. 
because you have more power than that. And every time you victimize yourself, you are denying your power. I started the idea of this topic about victimizing ourselves thinking that this was just a black and white thing. It's very simple. Don't victimize yourself. Stop playing the victim. Stop having the victim mentality. In fact, the life coaching program that I worked through, there was a short blurb on victim mentality and how important it is as life coaches to help our clients get out of that space and shift their perspective. But oh my gosh, is it so much deeper. And I'm learning that through experience that is much deeper. It's not just a mindset shift that needs to happen. To just say you need to shift your mindset, I find that to be very toxic positivity. Oh, just tell yourself this affirmation and you'll feel better. Lies. I know that's a lie. I've tried it. (laughs) I have been there and I can say that that is not true. It's deeper. Most things are. (laughs) I laugh at that because I have the gate of depth in my human design chart. I am going to find the deeper meaning. I think I drive my husband nuts with that. (laughs) I just asked him a question the other day. He said he wanted something. Why do you want that? What's the deeper meaning for that? (laughs) He's like, there is no deeper meaning. I just want it. Okay. Okay, honey. (laughs) Let me not life coach you right now. The deeper meaning of victimization is that there is pain there. And we have to dive into that. We have to dive into that in order to stop telling a victim story. (sighs) We do it so often, too, on such a small scale that we don't realize it. I mean little things. I'll tell you this silly, silly example. I went to eat the other night with my family at a restaurant that was hosting a school fundraiser. So uh, friends of ours were there too. And I have a peanut allergy, the most annoying allergy of all the allergies. (laughs) And I will 100% still victimize myself in this. Let me find the pain I need to heal from this peanut allergy. I haven't had it my whole life. It only started when I was 22 or 23. But the woman behind the counter basically refused to get me a definite answer. Just said we cannot... We cannot guarantee it. And if she truly could not guarantee it because the products that they have say may contain or traces of, then 100% I am not going to risk it. And I come fully prepared with that being told to me. I, I'm okay with that. But she wouldn't even make this effort to go find out for me. And I got frustrated. And then I... I did not eat. So my family ate and I did not eat. And then I go out and the food is apparently very good. I couldn't tell you, but (laughs) I'm telling my friends why I couldn't eat. And I noticed in my story that I was telling them how I was victimizing myself in that moment. Was it messed up that the woman wouldn't find the answer? Yes. But just because of this new level of awareness that I came in, I knew I was going to get pity. On a deep subconscious level, I knew "Mm, they're going to feel sorry for me for this. I can get a little sympathy here. And it wasn't until after, well, I kind of noticed it when I was saying, and then I stopped. I was like, I need to stop telling this story (laughs) right in the middle of me telling one of my friends. And then afterwards, I was really thinking about it like, wow, you really were victimizing yourself there, Mandy. And this is just me being real. I, I'm just being real with you. It's that simple sometimes. Sometimes it's deeper. Oh, didn't I just contradict myself? <laughs> I just said it's always deeper. I always look for the deeper meaning. Maybe that's what I meant. All right, listen. I, I'm going to tell you this. At the end of the day, you get to decide. You get to decide if you're going to stand in your power or if you want to stay with that victim story. The choice is yours. I've seen people who have been to hell and back work through and come out on the other side and tell a power story. 
And I've seen it enough times that I can tell you that it's possible for you. It is. And you have this incredible power within you. But you have to choose to shift. You get to choose to shift. And if it feels really hard right now, that's okay. Find a way to work through that. Find a way to heal. I've talked about the healing modalities that are out there. Energy work, human design, therapy, talking to a friend that you can trust. Talking to someone who can truly help you expand your level of awareness. The biggest thing with being a victim is you are not in your power, but also you're lacking self-esteem. You're lacking courage. You got to face that stuff so you can have it. In order to be courageous, one must act courageously. Develop that self-esteem through acts of honesty and integrity and have self-respect because every time we stand in that victim mentality, we are not having self-respect. When we are not standing in our power, we are lacking boundaries and we're not operating in integrity with ourselves. This is not just for you. It's for the people around you. And the more you lean into that, the more you step into that power, the happier you're going to be for one, the more peace you're going to feel, the more freedom you're going to feel, and the more you're going to empower yourself to keep on, and the more you're going to empower others around you. I'll say this again, there is power in our pain. And if you are feeling pain right now, I want you to know it's going to be okay. And you are loved. And you are valued. And the world needs you to sit in that pain so that you can evolve and become the most magnificent version of yourself. I think that's a great place to end. Listen, my friend, if you enjoyed this, Please subscribe. Feel free to leave a review on whichever app you're listening on. Share this with a friend because you never know who might need to hear it. And please take care. Sending you all my love. Bye now.